everybody. This is Joseph P. Farrell with news and views from the Nefarium on Thursday, October 13th, 2022. A very interesting one today, but first I've got to take care of the housekeeping as we usually do. Tomorrow afternoon, as you know, we do have another members vid chat. So that means please get your comments and questions posted in the comments section of that vid chat by no later than 10 o'clock U.S. Central Time this evening. Uh, I will be in there early tomorrow, of course, to get everything set up. Remember, we're on a new format, so it may take me a while to remember how to get it all set up. But once I do, I'm going to open it up right away to the pre-chat discussion, and I will probably start the actual formal chat right around 2.30 rather than 3 o'clock, just to be sure that we get everything in and to be sure that I'm up and working. Uh, on another matter, people have been asking me where are the Solari, uh, Solari uh, quarterly wrap-ups. Catherine was back here, and uh, I finally managed to see her for a recording session for her wrap-up uh, just this past weekend, it was real nice to see her, and uh, we did get that recorded. It may take a little while this time to get everything uh, posted on Solari because we had to use a different kind of format than we are normally used to using when we do those wrap-ups. So uh, be patient, but it is in the can, so it should be coming out, I hope, sometime this week or shortly thereafter next week. Now, let's get to what I want to talk about. Uh, and many of you, including Catherine, actually, sent this story because you're following it, and I'm glad you're following it because I think this is a hugely important story. And as usual, I'm going to walk off the end of the twig of high-octane speculation <laughs> and tell you why I think it's a, a highly significant story. It's actually posted by the European Space Agency, and the story is titled First Kinetic Impact Test Succeeds in Shifting the Asteroid Orbit. Now, you remember that NASA sent up an impactor probe to the double asteroid Didymus and Dimorphos to impact on the smaller asteroid Dimorphos to see if they could actually alter the orbit of the asteroid around its parent asteroid, Didymus. So that's what we're talking about here. And I want to read you just a few paragraphs from the European Space Agency's reportage on this. And we'll get back to all the reasons why after I read you these paragraphs. So here we go. Quote, as a next step, or pardon me, the kinetic impact of NASA's DART spacecraft with the Dimorphos asteroid around its larger Didymus parent body has succeeded in shifting its orbit, meaning mankind's first planetary defense test has been successful. Observations are continuing of the debris plume caused by, by the collision for as long as possible as the asteroid system gradually recedes from Earth. As a next step, ESA's HERA mission will return to the double asteroid system to investigate the consequences of the impact. Gathering close-up data to turn this experiment in a scalable, repeatable technique that one day might be used for real. The next mission to fly to the Didymus system is going to be the HERA mission planned by the European Space Agency, a multinational endeavor, to go back to the system and get a chance to look at it again a little later on, commented Lori Glaze, director of NASA's Planetary Science Division. Prior to DART's impact, it took Dimorphos 11 hours and 55 minutes to orbit its larger parent asteroid Didymus. Since DART's intentional collision with Dimorphos on the 26th of September, astronomers have been using telescopes on Earth to measure how much that time has changed. Now the investigation team has confirmed the spacecraft's impact altered Dimorphos' orbit around Didymus by 32 minutes, shortening the 11-hour and 55-minute orbit to 11 hours and 23 minutes. 
This measurement has a margin of uncertainty approximately plus or minus two minutes. Now I'm skipping a few paragraphs here. In exactly two years from now, the European Space Agency's Hera spacecraft will embark on its own voyage to Didymus and Dimorphos to carry out detailed surveys of both bodies with a particular focus on the crater left by DART's collision and a precise measurement of Dimorphos mass, which is needed to determine the efficiency of the DART impact. Hera's payload module is currently under construction at OHB in Germany with its propulsion module taking shape at Avio in Italy. The spacecraft will also carry two shoebox-sized cube satellites for close-up observations. And now I'm skipping all the way to the end of this article. Quote, in the run-up to the impact, the European Space Agency was also laser-focused laser on the f this first world mission. The agency's S-Track network of deep space antennas supported NASA's own, filling in the gaps in the deep space network to ensure tracking and data download from DART was seamless and the mission could lock on to its relatively tiny target at vast speed. And that's the end of the article. Now, I'm going to submit here, folks, that all of this is quite significant because, first of all, there are basically five points I want to make here. And for those of you who are kind of reading between the lines as I am, you'll have noticed something that I think pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that you'll have noticed something that I think uh, was apparent to me right off the bat. And first of all, that's the international effort here. In other words, what we have also, if you read between the lines, is a build-out and beta test of an international tra asteroid tracking system. So this is kind of written into this article, but you have to read between the lines. But it's that last paragraph that discloses this international effort. So in other words, they're already doing this, folks. And it's very interesting that the article emphasizes that they were tracking something very tiny, relatively speaking. So in other words, the, the sensor systems perhaps may be a little bit better than we've been led to believe. Now, the Hera mission, to me, is very, very unusual that they're, they're going back to this double asteroid system to actually survey the amount of damage that was done to Dimorphos and potentially, I would imagine, to anything that might have caused damage to Didymus. Um, I want you to look at that in a very different way. This would be rather like aerial or photo reconnaissance during World War II or World War I to see how an artillery barrage or an aerial bombardment has affected the target. Was the target destroyed? Did it sustain heavy damage, in, in other words, and so on and so forth. So in other words, what we have here in this international effort is also the development of what, for want of a better expression, we can simply call photo reconnaissance of the target after a, a so-called impact event. So in other words, you're watching right before your eyes the development of an interplanetary impactor and bombardment capability. And, and this, I think, is very, very significant. And incidentally, you're watching one being developed using chemical rockets. They are gaining, from what I can tell from this short article, I'm trying to read between the lines a bit, they are gaining a vast amount of experience in how these smaller microplanetary systems behave and how the gravity behaves. This is going to be crucial, folks, if ever at any point a rocket-based system that you can modify the flight path is exchanged or replaced by a railgun system, which would be much faster than a rocket, but much less able to correct course. In fact, most, most railgun systems that we've developed thus far 
have been purely ballistic systems. So I'm suspecting that they're doing a lot more that they're not telling us here and that there is a military application and purpose to all of this. And that brings me to my final, my final point. You'll recall in my blog about the DART mission that I commented that the asteroid Dimorphos itself looked vaguely, vaguely artificial. So I have to wonder if the damage that they are going to survey, if in fact they are also interested if the impact may have exposed or kicked up more data for them to look at and to determine if indeed it was artificial. And if that's the case, I have to wonder if the whole impact experiment itself was intended not only as a proof of concept experiment, which we've certainly been told in all these articles about it, but if it was in addition to that a demonstration, a message. And if that's the case, a message to whom? Um, I'm beginning to think that we're, we're watching the slow unfolding or the slow revelation of a developed impactor and kinetic weapons technology. This is my concern with this test. Uh, it has been from the very beginning. And this article, if you look at it carefully, is exposing at least two aspects of a conventional military type of operation, the tracking, the, the uh, ability to target something and guide something to that target over vast distance with a small target, and then secondly, a photo reconnaissance capability. Um, there's no doubt in my mind, as a matter of fact, that, that there are already kinetic weapons up in orbit. We need only think of the Soviet Union during the Cold War launching its own killer satellites. Many of those were simply uh, armed with very simple kinetic weapons impactors to disable an enemy satellite. So I think there's much more going on here in this story. Uh, I want you to pay attention to the development of this technology because eventually I think they're going to tip their hand and expose uh, some very significant capabilities. Anyway, that's it for today's news and views. Don't forget tomorrow we do have the vid chat. That will be at, I think I'm going to start early, 2.30 2 p.m. U.S. Central Time. Get your comments and questions submitted by 10 o'clock this evening. And cross your fingers that I don't have any trouble getting the new platform up and running tomorrow. If I do have any trouble, I will be in the chat room uh, to type a message and let everybody know and we'll figure out where to go from there. I'm not anticipating anything dire. Uh, it's just the newbie, the technical incompetent here <laughs> sitting in this chair that uh, has difficulty with new technologies and new formats. Anyway, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye, everybody. God bless, and I'll see you on the flip side.